I really want to thank you for, uh, for making the effort, Joe. Really appreciate it. And you know, I'm hoping everybody really appreciates the work. And <laughs> one important thing to note with this work is you won't get any more from Joe from this area because he only paints outside. So he doesn't go home and take photo take photos and go home and paint in his studio. So if you see something you like here, grab it because you know I don't know when we'll get Joe back again. Yeah, he's, got, he's a busy boy and he's got a, he goes straight back to the years. He's straight back to the UK, he's got an exhibition, I think, opening went almost four days, four days after he flies home, the work's all done. So he's a busy boy, but yeah, the opportunity's here, and while we've got the work, it's great. We will get more work, but it'll all be UK-based work, so the Margaret River work, we won't see from him again for who knows when. Um, and Stu, who jumped on board, in fact, we had meetings in our dining room over summer talking about how we do this show, and that's the reason we did that bit of a reveal tonight. You know, we thought, let's just pull it back, you know, get people to listen and, and learn a bit about about uh, how the work's been put together first and then turn the lights on and come in and have a bit of a reveal and that, that was really, I don't know if anybody else enjoyed that, but uh, that was a pretty cool process. So that really was Stu's idea. Build the um, anticipation, guys. And concept. <laughs> Thanks, Heidi. And uh, you did a great job. I don't know off anymore, and, but I do know Joe wanted to say a few words, so I'll hand you over to your Stu. Who's first? Come on, take uh, Joe, go first. Joe. He's Joe Webster. Take the floor, mate. How are we going? Yeah, I've got loads I want to say, but you probably, like, the film, almost, Frank's film was beautiful. It, kind of, it almost said it more, just kind of that experience of being, being out on the coast or in the woods and stuff like that. Um, essentially, the, the thing that, that drives my work is just, I just love being out in nature. I, um, I just kind of, I could live just in a, in a tent on the beach almost or something like that. And um, I think that's, that's, I mean, I'm, I'm sure I'm speaking to the converted here. You guys all love your landscape. That's why you, everyone, all, everyone I've met just, just, I feel the same sort of feeling about it here. But I, I, I sometimes question how many people really love being out in like full on thunderstorms and high winds and stuff like that. Certainly people in the UK have said, sort of favourite pastime to sort of moan about the weather all the time. <laughs> and, um, and from a very young age, I grew up on a very similar, in Cornwall, very similar coastline to this, and I just, I love being beaten by the elements and stuff, and I feel, kind of puts me in perspective, into my life in perspective, I kind of feel invigorated from it, and that's, that's where my work sort of was born, really, kind of just wanting to be outside the whole time and um, as my work's matured it's kind of evolved into this this sort of realization that actually it's I think it's it's really important for society it's important for individual sort of well-being to actually have this connection to nature it's part of maybe what we've lost in in the modern world and stuff like that so somebody once asked me kind of what do you, what are you trying to say in your work what do you hope somebody will feel when they see your work. And I guess I see it as, by me doing what I love, it's a, a sort of window into nature, if you like. It's a kind of like, it's, it's an experience that kind of like opens the doors back out from the, the, our, our rooms, our houses, and our boxes, and stuff like that. Um, I use water-based media, mainly acrylic. I sort of trained in watercolour techniques, so I kind of, I, I, I train in sort of diluting paint and watching what happens when the rain, the mist, the hail, the snow sort of like lands on paint. Every different type of weather creates different effects. There's, there's paintings in my book where I've kind of layered two foot of snow onto paint and just see, see what happens when <laughs> kind of the snow crystals melt into the paint. Like Andy Goldsworth. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Yeah, it's it kind of like. I just do what I love, and then it kind of evolved into that, and so there's kind of a, there's the technical aspect of kind of like mark making and composition and colour, but I guess a key part of what I do is actually managing what happens if I can see that rain cloud coming, and kind of like, how much can I get done, how's that going to change the paint when it lands and stuff like that, and kind of opening the paint up to that challenge is really exciting. Sometimes I totally lose pieces of work and often it kind of creates really cool effects itself. This was this piece here was kind of one piece where um, 
the painting, I just got hit by this, this you can see the dark clouds in there and so on, and I just, I just got hit by this huge storm cloud and it just made this muddy puddle on the campus. And, and I was really happy with that and I lost it. I kind of just went to bed in the camp about that night and I was going, oh, I've lost, it was great, five minutes ago. And then kind of like you wake up in the morning and you kind of look at it and there's kind of there's some bits where it's kind of created really cool effects and so once it's dried and then you get this sort of resilience and you just go back back out into the storm and kind of like keep reworking that and, and see it's about turning that that challenge and that kind of thing around into something where when you invite the mate which you're in and it's it's a risk and you don't know quite what's going to happen and then working through that challenge something good comes out of it if you keep putting yourself out in that sort of situation. Um, that's pretty much it. And, and most recent to the thing that I've sort of started working with being inspired by is graffiti tools. So I'm using spray paint and kind of paint pens and stuff like that um, because they work very, very quickly and kind of fix permanently. So you can put elements in and you know that they're, no matter what, what throws at you, that's going to stay sort of still, and then other bits um, I put on and I know they might get lost and so on. So some of the sort of the effects of these sorts of bits here and the inspiration behind some of this stuff is kind of much more looking at urban sort of street art and stuff like that and sort of trying to synthesize that sort of modern traditional both within the tools I'm using and kind of the mark Nice. That's everything. Awesome work. Anyone got any questions while Joe's got the floor? Here we go, Louise. Can I just ask about the splashes there? Like, was that really, were you nervous when you did it? Well, <laughs> I was bloody nervous. It was great. I love that, but I, I can't imagine doing it to it. Like, it was obviously almost a finished painting and it went Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I actually put on an earlier splash. But I didn't like the sky, so I actually repainted the sky and repainted and painted out the splash. This was two days ago, is yeah. it? The whole painting was the whole painting was finished, and I was just like, I just want to like. <laughs> I just yeah. But that's but, what happens, isn't it? Because yeah. Coast, all of a sudden, away we get. It's a little bit like you kind of you, you sort of poise. It's like diving off a diving board yeah. or something like that, you've got like a load of wet paint and it's kind of like, oh. <laughs> you wait and you wait and then when, when the moment gets you, you just kind of like, right, and you've, mm. you've got one challenge, kind of, you need to kind of like attack it, right. one strike, right. you can't, you can't, oh I'll just change that. But you did it twice by the looks of it. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> two strikes. But that catharsis was like what you did in this painting too, with that like beautiful man, like, that's random, that could go anywhere. And then just letting it pour. I love that, that made me love that loud. Well done. I've never done that before, actually. That was, like I said at the start, it was just like, I think this might work. Well, uh, so, uh, I reckon <laughs> my question would be, how many canvases did make it? Yeah. Only, only one. one. Only one. And it's because he fell in the river and gashed his leg on day one. <laughs> coming, back, coming back from Chicken Hill in the dark. <laughs> Lara and I just said, I hope he doesn't fall in the river. And he comes home, he's got blood all down his leg and this canvas has been in the drink with him. It was the first. I met Joe and I was just covered in blood. Yeah. That was the second, third night, I think I met Joe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Do you have any antiseptic? I'm not sure if I want a leg infection for the rest of my stay. I would sort of hold them a little bit. Put yourself up, you know, and you get rewarded. Yeah. Thanks, mate. That's really awesome. Yeah. Uh, Joe's here. Yeah, obviously, you want to get other questions, come up and see him. And... Well, thank you. Thank you. I'll keep one short and sweet, um, obviously, but, you know, these sculptures have come about in the last probably two months. I've had a lot more time because I kind of view that was working towards this with Joe. We'd only kind of had a few interactions online, so we didn't really know each other. I think the first time we kind of introduced each other, Joe was like, do you know a good laundry mat? I can come and <laughs> do my washing. And I said, mate, just come to my place. Margaret will be welcome. Um, you know, I've got a washer, a dryer. We'll go and have some food, catch up. We started to talk about, you know, 
I guess, our connection to nature and stuff like that. And that's really what a lot of my work probably over the years has been about anyway. It's, it's this sort of, you know, uh, what, what we probably strive to get back to, the, the, the person who's got the Instagram shot on a cliff top by themselves, but there's 400 other people watching them. <laughs> um, but, you know, nature can kind of take our breath away. And I think Joe's work particularly, um, and my work that we kind of, we didn't really know how it was going to come together, but, you know, we brought it into that space yesterday and we were just like, wow, like, it actually talks to each other. And, and that's, I guess, you know, what we're looking at, you know, conversations that you can have with nature. You don't have to speak, you just, you know, go out and watch the clouds, watch the ocean. It's, it's what we're kind of innately uh, tuned for, but we don't necessarily sort of uh, do it every day because we're busy on our, you know, daily grind. But yeah, I guess that thing of just giving people an insight into how we see the landscape and obviously everyone's taking little bits um, from all the artworks and sort of, you know, uh, you know, that, that sort of energy and space. So, really love to thank Joe Rock for inviting us for this exhibition and nice to work with Joe and um, Lara and Joe and Gary and um, Dave. You know, thanks for having us in the gallery, all the people that have come out tonight. It's not too wild out there. Um, I hear there's a party at Swings after here, so um, <laughs> enjoy some, you know, mulled wine and yeah, thanks for coming out tonight, guys. <laughs> Frank and Junie as well. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. As well. <laughs>